Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. We're going to be taking a look at another LDD tutorial because I have a little bit of time uh, before I want to go back to sleep. Um, I'll probably watch a little bit more Assassination Classroom to be completely honest. But that is besides the point. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at another LDD tutorial. I'm pretty sure I've already said that though. And today we're going to be taking a look at the tools and everything on the inside of LDD. Uh, just a forewarning, I'm going to be working out of LEGO Digital Designer Extended. Um, you probably need to watch the last video if you don't understand the difference between Extended Mindstorms or the Blue Tab. Uh, this one way over here. Um, I prefer Extended. Extended is the best one. But we're going to be taking a look at the different, I want to say, Brick Palette, um, Template Palette, and then the other one. I, and we're going to go over what they are and what they do basically so without further ado here we go so this entire column right here that just popped out my eyes are really watering i'm sorry guys the entire little thing that just popped out and i'm still rubbing my eyes so if i sound weird that's why is what we call the brick palette now then the brick palette is going to be the primary tab that you work out of and the reason for that is because this has all of your bricks in it uh, so all your angled or your kind of curved slope pieces, your normal slope pieces, your technic pins, your weird snap pieces. Uh, you'll probably need to memorize everything that are in these tabs. And then you probably also need to memorize what these things are called. Because if you use the search bar up here to find something, you want to know what they're called so that when you type it in, you find what you want to find. Uh, so, basically, some of the different tools inside of the brick tab are obviously the search bar. So you can type in, uh, we'll go with um, connector. Connector piece there, and all these connector pieces here. So that's how that works. Um, now then... If you want to switch from using all of these red pieces to another color, you click down here on filter bricks by color and then select whichever color you want. If you want to, let's say we just start opening everything. We open every single tab here as much as possible. Just We open everything. Now that we have like 18,000 bricks opened up everywhere. If you want to collapse all of your tabs at once, you click this button right here. And it will all close. Um, generally speaking, I'll be like way down here and I'll select a piece and I'll come back out. Instead of scrolling back up, I'll go ahead and I'll just collapse dividers. It's much uh, simpler. This zoom feature right here is basically a good way to see all of your uh, pieces. So if you know where all your pieces are really well, you could zoom all the way out and then you could just select it all from here. Uh, so you can make all of these look really small and really easy to find, basically. If you want to make this entire tab a little bit bigger, you can drag this way, way out if you wanted to. And then you could always zoom all the way back in just to make the pieces a little bit bigger. I keep it down to default size for the most part and then zoomed all the way in for the most part. That's what I'm just used to. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, I might zoom out just a little bit to the point where I'll get it like a fourth column going uh, because I can still see the parts for the most part. Um, when I select bricks out of the brick palette, I'm always looking at the studs on top and things like that. And this one's obviously a, uh, like a brick piece and I need to be able to see that. So sneezes coming but just one way I, I don't know what's wrong with it um i'm gonna go ahead and back this back up and that back in uh so that's a little bit about the the brick palette it's a pretty basic one and that's the the first little um window i guess is what you would call them uh the second window that we're going to go ahead and talk about is the templates window now then your templates window is probably going to be one of your more favorite things about LDD. So what happens in templates is you can select something, a smaller model, 
and you can add it to this window so that even though I don't have anything here, I have all these different things to select from. So um, this is the Peacekeeper style uh, foregrip. This is a rail system attachment. This is uh, Alan's custom Lego uh, scope attachment. This is the M4 styled stock. This is another three stud wide um, rail attachment, except this one's uh, all connected, whereas this one's slotted. I have a uh, Allen's custom Lego red dot sight. I have a M4 styled magazine here. I have the MP5 styled stock here. So what you can do with your templates is you can grab it and you can drag it out and you can see how easy it is to make rail systems using this type of stuff because it just keeps stacking up and up. Now then, how you can add things to the template group is simply by you have your model built. Let's just say that this is now a spaceship. I select every brick in the model and then down here in this corner it says creates a template from selection. What that means is that everything selected is going to be created into a new template. To delete a template, you simply click on the red X and then hit yes. Uh, I obviously don't need two of these in my template bar, so yes, I don't need that. Like I said, you can always drag these out, so if you have a thousand templates, you can just make it a little bit easier to see. And then you could use the zoom out feature to make it easier to see as well. Uh, think of this as like a Photoshop type window where you have different uh, different viewing areas, uh, different tabs to do different things. The last thing that we're going to be talking about is the groups section. Now then, I actually need a model to demonstrate this with. You know what, we'll go... Uh, We'll go with my most recent model. <clears throat> Excuse the sniffling. I'm pretty sure I'm sick. So this is just a mech that I worked on the other day. Uh, I was inspired by uh, something. So bear with me because it's been a long, long time since I've done groups. Um, but I'm pretty sure what groups are. It create a group from selection. And then you can do different types of things with this. This is like the layer section of Photoshop. So I have every orange piece selected right now with the groups. If I wanted to, to make this real easy, I could click on the orange piece and it selects all the orange pieces. Let's say I also want to add all of the red pieces to our group. So you can add the selection to the group, and then, as you can see in the model up here, all of the red pieces have been added into the orange pieces. So I can easily click on all of that, and then hide it. So the benefits of having a group is basically you can work in layers. So let's say, um, basically how I did this is that all of the orange and the red are the armor pieces. So we select this and then we hide it and now we're looking at the main frame of uh, the mech. So we're looking at basically all the skeleton. All the black is where all the joints are, uh, basically. And that's how that works. So the more interesting thing about the group is that you can... You can do that? Let's say I have the hide tool selected. If you click on the group, it automatically hides it. If you clone the group, it automatically clones it. I did not know this. Uh, this is something that I'm learning right now. So, and then you can delete the group. So that's kind of cool. Like, I didn't know this until now. So you guys are learning with me as I go. I don't usually use the groups feature. I can't really find a reason to use it to be completely honest, but I might in the future. So let's just say that we select it. Uh, you can remove the selection from the group or you can create a subgroup from selection, which um, let's, let's, uh, let's see if I can do, let's say that I want to remove that and then we will select that and create a subgroup. 
And then in this subgroup, we will add the red, but remove the orange. There we go. So now we can hide just the red if we wanted to, and we can just hide the orange. And then we could name this group something like this is the armor group. And then we could probably make our own frame group. So let's do the frame group. So let's go ahead and we'll take the uh, thing and then we'll create a group. And then we'll make it a subgroup. And then we'll do that. So now then we can unhide the armor. And then we can just hide this piece. If we don't want to hide both the red and the black, or the uh, the black and the gray, then we can just hide that piece. Or not. Hold on. Let me fix this. I messed up on this group. Um, we'll do color select gray. Remove from that group. There we go. All right. So we can just hide the black if we wanted to, or we can hide both the gray as well. And then we're left with just the armor and then the uh, the rest of the scythe and then the kind of like the eyepiece up there. Or we can hide just the red or we could hide just the gorge. And then we could obviously make a translucent red layer as well so that we could hide all of that. So that's pretty cool. I might start using groups a little bit more now that I know more about how they work and things like that. Uh, groups is pretty much just a layer type thing. Um, that you can do different things with. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll download a gun and you guys can kind of learn with me about how to use the guns just a little bit differently. Uh, what do I want to show off? Uh, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with the ARAC PDW. This is a sneak peek of an upcoming mock. So if you guys want to check this out, yeah, look at that. So let's say that I want to make the entire upper receiver into a group. So, or we'll go with just gray. Make that into a group. Click on it. Boom, hidden. Now you can see all of the internals. So you can see the bolt that's sitting up on top of the magazine with the fake bullet on the top of it connected to the charging handle. You can see the how the stock works and then where it connects to the buffer tube. Let's say I want to hide everything that's black now. Boom, now you can see just the blue and everything like that. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, that's definitely, um, I'd say, innovative. And then I want to say that it saves as well. Yes, it does save per model. So you can close out of models and reopen them, and then it will load up the group as well. Uh, so groups do save per model, which is pretty legit. I like that. So groups are layers. Templates are models that you can use to import the other one. So if you're wondering how I got the uh, Alice Custom Lego red dot site in here, I just clicked on it and then dragged it up on top of the rail. Uh, also, that's the same thing that I did with the front Peacekeeper site thingy, or the Peacekeeper foregrip. And then bricks are the things that you can select and you can drag out onto the model. So that's how that works. Um, I don't know how long this episode is or anything like that, but we're going to go over the basic camera functions as well. So we've gone over the brick palette and now we're going to go over the different camera functions. Uh, so first things first, if you're on a laptop, get a mouse. I'm on a mouse. I'm on my laptop right now, but I have a mouse plugged in because it's so much easier to use this model when you have a mouse. So if you want to use LED's basic camera features, here's what they do. This top arrow goes that way. Bottom arrow goes that way. This arrow goes that way. And this arrow goes that way. If you want to zoom in, use the plus sign. If you want to zoom out, use the minus sign. If you want to reset the camera around the model, you press that button. So let's say we open this back up. Let's say I zoom all the way in and you can't see jack shit. So if you want to reset the camera, you press this model and it will zoom out and will fit your model inside of the screen. So if you want to use all the mouse shortcuts, you will 
right click and hold and drag whichever direction you want the camera to move. If you want to zoom in, use the little middle mouse wheel. If you want to zoom out, use the other mouse wheel, but go backwards. And if you want to reset the camera, you can't really do that with the mouse, but if you have a number pad on your computer, pressing five will reset it. And then using the other um, things around the five, will also move it around the model. So right now I'm using the number pad on my laptop to uh, do this. Uh, and then I want to say using the plus and minus um, on the minus or on the number pad will zoom in and zoom out. Just to uh, give you guys an idea of how the keyboard shortcuts and stuff work. So. That's pretty cool. Um, generally speaking, I use the mouse. Uh, as you can see, like I can just whip this fucking bottle back and forth so quick that you can't even tell which way is going which way. You can't even tell if I'm going back and forth if I'm doing complete 360s or things like that. So anyhow, I use the mouse uh, because the mouse is easier. So with your number pad, you have this one consistent motion. With the mouse, you can start slow, and then you can slowly just build up to make it turn really quick. So if I'm working on this side, and I press this button to go over to the other side, it'll take a bit of time. Whereas I can just whip it around really quick and then be on the side that I want to be on. Um, some notes. Uh, if you press shift and then move, you can just completely move the model way over there. I don't know why you would do this or what you would use it for, but you can do it. It's kind of weird. I don't know why, but you can do it. Uh, of other note, what was I going to do? If you want to center the camera on a piece, just any particular piece, like let's say that I just finished building the stock, right? Now I want to build the rest of the gun. Well, it's kind of hard when everything is focused around the stock. If you want to center the uh, camera on a piece kind of up here, you right click on that piece. So right now I'm obviously centered in on this piece, but if I wanted to, I can center in on that piece. Maybe I want this piece. And then you could use it. So if you're zoomed in and you don't want to zoom out, you could just kind of use it to move down the side of the model up to the front. Generally speaking, that's how I use it, it is just moving back and forth over the model. Uh, things like that. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all we have time for. Next episode, we're beginning over the uh, the tops of the toolbar, everything up here, basically. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I have a really runny nose. I swear, I'm getting sick. Anyhow, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.